Um, now what the, the conversation seems to be about right now is if it's not my back, it's not my calves or something, it seems to be my chest is this, the newest one. So, um, and the truth is I, I don't know. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to EP09. All right, so we have an update here from Emmanuel Alvarez. Now, I last reported on Emmanuel about two weeks ago when he announced he was doing the Puerto Rico Pro, but there actually is no Puerto Rico Pro anymore. So Emmanuel posted here that he was sitting at 26 days out, which would place him at the time frame to compete at the Orlando Pro. So that means we're going to see Emmanuel stand next to both Hassan Mustafa and Jason Lowe, who just finished competing in the Toronto Pro. So looking at Emmanuel's physique here, I think we might have a threat to that Orlando Pro title here so far, you guys. This may be his pro debut, but I mean, <laughs> pro debut or not, this guy is absolutely massive. Emmanuel not only has the mass, but with that shape and that X-frame, I think Emmanuel can really do some damage here. Look at the roundness of the delts and the pop of the lats from the front. He's got huge sweeping quads. If anything, his quads actually slightly overpower his upper body from the front. Not that I think it really takes away from his overall flow, but from the back, I do think he could use some more thickness and width. That's really the only thing I can say from a size and shape standpoint right now. Now, with that being said, how will Emmanuel stack up against Hassan Mustafa? Well, I do think Hassan will win the back shots. Like I said, Emmanuel does need more width and detail there, but from the front and from the side, I think it's going to come down to conditioning. And we all know Hassan typically comes up short in the conditioning department. So if a guy like Emmanuel Alvarez can come in and defeat a juggernaut like Hassan Mustafa at his pro debut, no less, we would see another competitor's stock rise in pretty much an instant. So let me know what you guys think of Emmanuel Alvarez and how he'll do at the Orlando Pro. And in the meantime, we'll watch out for more updates. All right, next up, Stuart Sutherland dropped an update on his Instagram following the New York and Cali Pro. And in his most recent post, Stu has responded to the criticism he's received about, <laughs> I mean, not smiling on stage. And you know, I said it myself, you guys, and it's true. Stu really didn't look all that happy up there after the prejudging, especially in New York. So Stu captions here, my face when people tell me I need a haircut and need to smile more on stage. After the USA's last year, I jokingly said to Steve Weinberger, I probably need to smile more, huh? To which he responded in his signature New York accent, that don't matter. I'm not doing the New York accent, you guys. So in case anyone was wondering if it mattered, if I was pretty, I'd be wearing board shorts, not trunks. I'm mostly concerned about everything from the neck down, and I'm pretty sure so are the judges. And also, I think the only time so many men have been uh, blah blah blah, you, you guys can read the rest of this anyway. So the question is, does it really matter? Well, okay, if Steve Weinberger says it doesn't matter, from a judge's perspective, maybe it doesn't. But to the bodybuilding world, it's been well established that competitors are better received by the fans when they look like they're enjoying themselves up there. Not just to the fans, but the media out there as well. No, you won't lose any points on the judges' scorecards, but there's no denying that guys that look, you know, happier up on stage, guys that actually look like they want to be there, they get a different response from the fans, regardless of the physique. Now, to me, I really don't care if he looks pissed off or if he looks like he just won the Olympia. I agree with Big Steve. At the end of the day, it's the physique that really matters. But after the New York and Cali Pro, I think not only did we learn what kind of physique we can expect from Beef Stew in future competitions, we also have an idea what we can expect when it comes to the personality we're going to see from Stu as well. And you know, it's been said out there, we want more personalities in bodybuilding. And you know what? We're starting to get them. So let me know in the comments again, you guys. Does a smile or a sour look really matter to you as a fan watching the sport? Alright, last up. After virtually no response from Ian Valier immediately following his victory at the Toronto Pro, Ian has released a video clip where he talks about his thoughts on the package he brought to the Toronto Pro, his plans for the rest of the competition season, and he addresses the concern being expressed in every corner of the online bodybuilding community about the gap in his chest. So here's a few of the clips for you guys. In terms of Toronto, uh, I'm extremely happy with the package that we brought to Toronto. I think it was a significant market improvement from the Olympia. I thought my back, sh back shots looked significantly better. Um, now what the, the conversation seems to be about right now is if it's not my back, it's not my calves or something, it seems to be my chest is this, the newest one. So. Um, 
And the truth is, I, I don't know. I, I don't feel an injury there. I don't have an injury. No injury occurred, just like with my back, whatever that, you know, conversation that was going on at the time, there was no injury that I was aware of. Um, you know, I, can I see what people are referring to? Sure. Um, but I also have pictures at different points in my career where this spot in my chest on both pecs, kind of alternating at times throughout my career, uh, was more apparent and more prevalent than it was at other times. You know, when I'm bursting full, like 2019 Vancouver, um, where you can't see it. But obviously my goal as a bodybuilder is to always improve. Um, and if this is something that is, you know, a, a small flaw in my physique that we can see, we obviously want to make it better. Um, I'm, I'm not by any level trying to avoid that conversation. Um, and that's why I, I felt it was necessary to put this out um, and just address it so that it doesn't look like there's any level of avoidance here. Um, but yeah, I just want to be an open book with you guys. Um, you know, whenever I know anything and we're, you know, making any headway in terms of our knowledge, um, and whatever we're gonna do to try and improve that, I'll absolutely let you guys know. Now, Ian also posted a pretty lengthy statement before releasing this video clip. I encourage you all to go and watch and read the full clips on Ian's Instagram. But you know, I don't think Ian is the kind of guy to come on here and feed us all a bunch of, well, you guys know. I think a lot of people would not expect Ian to address this so directly, when really, we shouldn't be surprised. Ian either posts on YouTube himself or does interviews post-show and recaps some of the finer details for us quite often, really. In 2020, he did an interview with Dave Palumbo after the Tampa Pro where he explained how his anxiety affected his look on stage. After the 2022 Olympia on Fuad's podcast, Ian explained how small changes before the show in posing and his sodium intake being improper left him looking flustered and washed out. And it wasn't that long ago that Ian took to his YouTube and announced that he was working with Matt Jansen again. He kind of snuffed the nerve damage in his back comments a little bit, just because, well, I think he thinks it's ridiculous is my guess. But you know what? This is the right response from Ian. This is an honest answer. A direct, honest answer. He said he would let us know when he finds out if there's something happening with his chest, and you know what? I believe him. With this level of transparency, I 100% respect he needs to take the time to find out what's happening, if there is even anything happening. Like he said, maybe it was a fullness issue. He was bursting full at the 2019 Vancouver Pro, which is actually my favorite version of Ian Valier to date. So it could be as simple as that. And what, there's still five months until the Olympia? Like he said, he's already in shape at this point. If he can balance a decent level of low body fat and steady progress where he's looking to make improvements, Ian could come in even better at the Olympia. So look, let me know down in the comments below. Do you think Ian can improve before the Olympia? And what do you think was the best version of Ian Valier? Was it the version we just witnessed at the 2023 Toronto Pro? Let me know below. Anyway, that's going to do it for me in this video, you guys. Thank you for tuning in to EP09. Be sure to like and subscribe.